my growing strategy for this year, 2022, with everything going on in the world and nobody knowing anything about what's coming next, even though we all kind of know because the agenda is right out in front of us. What I'm doing is focusing on bulk storage crops, so potatoes and winter squash and bush beans is another big focus because you can get multiple rotations and they come up quick and thick so you're gonna have a ton of them and I wanna have a lot of some of the main staples so that's gonna be the a bulk of everything I plant is like those three crops in particular and then from there I'm gonna focus on fruits other things and everything that I can think of and everything that I want out there and to see the genetic diversity and all that I'm still going to be planting just not nearly as much just smaller little sections of other things but the bulk of it potatoes winter squash to overwinter to get through what looks like could be a great depression <laughs> for like indefinitely here coming up so the idea is to shift in the way that I'm just living the lifestyle, growing bulk amounts and doing that going forward. I'll have hopefully enough for family and close people in rough times, but also at some point even have enough to sell because, well, we can all see that food is going to be the number one cash crop on the planet and really kind of is right now and your own healthy food never hurts too so that's another plus in it all but that's my shift in thinking about my growing strategy coming up for 2022 is to get ahead of the shortages get ahead of the inflation which is already here and completely radically adjust your diet and your lifestyle to simplify and eat what you grow and what you prep and prep and grow what you're going to eat and then you know, at some point you get 100% sustainable off your own little realm here you can't forget about your animals too and that's another thing I just thought of with my growing strategy into the spring and this year is I want to try to grow my chickens food their feed as much as I can supplement it and the rabbits too so leafy greens there's gonna be a bit of that and I'm gonna try to get as much of that to the rabbits and the chickens uh, grass so I'm gonna always be harvesting my grass if I'm cutting the grass or whichever way I can I even pull the grass by hand from like the edges where the beds meet the grass and things like that when it gets real long almost like I'm weed trimming but I'm just pulling the grass putting that in buckets and feeding that to the rabbits or to the chickens which will mainly probably be for rabbits more than chickens the grass and leaf litter because the rabbits you can transition and I'm going to be to just eating greens and grass and not having to buy pellet feed because that's another thing that may be in short supply in the future and to be completely regenerative and sustainable to have your animals feed factored in so if you have animals which a lot of homesteaders do because it's part of the regenerative nature of things to incorporate animals uh, the animorphs I mean animals <laughs> I mean we're all animorphs what do I mean um, it's the nature of things I just wanted to throw that in there because it's something to really think about going into this year especially with what's looking like uh, shortages and major events to come we're going back to pioneer homesteading style of living like our ancestors did or we won't exist in the future so all these ideas and get your animals if you don't have rabbits yet get rabbits because that meat is one of the healthiest meats in the world they do have good fat on them inside the body cavity there all around like the kidneys and whatnot there's just beautiful fat 
and it's like a pink meat. It's it's so good and so lean. I don't even call it white meat. I call it pink, and that should give you an idea of how, how I feel about it and how good it is for you. So with that and the chickens, and then the other thing with the chickens is hatching out your own birds. So you got to go ahead and, and learn the process and watch your hen go broody, which I'm about to do now. I haven't even done yet. So I know this is what I got to do now is I got to let my hens, a group of them, five or six, and then I'll put a rooster in about a month. I'm going to be setting that up for them to hopefully go broody in a separate section that I'm going to design and then they can maybe just in that spot they can hatch out eggs is the plan and uh, then I can have chicks coming in regeneratively into the incorporated into the uh, whole operation into the cycle here water now water is the most critical it is often overlooked when talking about prepping and storing up things and prepping for maybe a grid down so it often is get food get your survival food but but not so much emphasis on the water well you can have a lot of water bottles stored up and that I, I argue it isn't healthy that's not sustainable either uh, once you get to a higher level of prepping you're thinking about sustainability so what's the idea to have water storage is a really good idea 55 gallon blue drums have a bunch of those I have eight of them I have them full and I rotate them so that it's always rotating the water out twice a year there's also the idea of having water source so my neighbor for example I know he's got a, a, a pond I have good relations with my neighbor I can work out a deal to access water there likely uh, also water collection with rainwater collection systems is really good now tapping a shallow well as well that I've heard and seen a guy do it he did a really good job you can do that I have some of the pieces and a plan to do that coming up into the future also your home well so you can get a manual pump to access your homes well and draw water that way so there's that um, gray water collection so when you rinse things you can always save that water and run it through some kind of screen to screen out maybe larger things and then run it through your Berkey's and having the Berkey water elements the ceramic type that filter your water that's how you're going to want to really filter your water and you're going to want to have a ton of those on deck prepped up that's one thing you want to prep 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 and you can never have enough of and you can clean them so you can clean them and reuse them and vinegar works to really activate and uh, um, remove a lot of any buildup that gets on those filters so have vinegar on deck you can clean up your filters and you can use your filters the Berkey types there's also the Pro Pure and Berkey has a fluoride filter attachment that will get the arsenic too that doubles up on filtration power that to really clean the water and I use that for my drinking water the one that I drink from I have a bunch of Berkey systems and I use them for my animals and for me so we all have clean water you can collect water doing things like using five gallon buckets or bins that you may have that are you know extra laying around and you just got extra stuff so buckets you may have extra buckets from preps so things like that be clever I'm also putting in a pond so I'm gonna have water storage there too maybe what a hundred gallons or more stored up water just running around through the yard because I'm gonna cut little channels and make streams and all kinds of cool stuff so I'm gonna have extra water there that's another way so these are all things to really think about to have your water source and that's the most critical aspect to life and prepping 
and that you need to get locked down, squared away. 